Hi there booktube, it's Emily here and it feels like a really long time since I've sat in front of a camera and that's because at the beginning of July I had a wisdom tooth removed and as any of you who have ever had a tooth surgically ripped from your mouth will know it's not a very nice experience, you don't really feel like talking very much afterwards and I also had massive hamster face going on so I didn't want to put that in front of a camera. Um, but while I was away, I put out a couple of pre-recorded videos, including my booktube newbie tag. So if you're just stumbling across this video and you haven't watched that one, then please do go take a look. It will tell you a lot more about me and what makes me tick. And if you commented on that video or if you subscribed off the back of it, welcome. It's really exciting to have you here. So because of all of the wisdom tooth for Rory, I decided not to make a June wrap up this month. I'm going to do a double wrap up at the end of July. But I did want to tell you about one of the books that I read in June which I did for a read-along. So this was the hashtag Buried Read Along, which was hosted by Katie from Fusions of Wit. And thank you very much, Katie, for doing such a good job. I'm sorry it took me longer than June to read it, but I have some thoughts now. The book that we read was The Buried Pyramid by Jane Linsgold. And this is a sort of action adventure story set in the 1880s about an amateur British archaeologist called Sir Neville Hawthorne. And during his time in Egypt in the British army, he hears tales of a pharaoh who was much loved and known as very kind of just and wise amongst his people. But his tomb has never been found. And Sir Neville makes it his quest to set out into the desert and follow certain clues to find out where it might be buried. He takes along with him a group of helpers, including his young niece Jenny, who's just arrived from America. And she's not at all the kind of docile, pliable society lady that he's expecting. She's very much up for an adventure. Now, I chose this not just for the read along, but also as my out of my comfort zone read for the TBR takedown readathon. And it did turn out to be very much out of my comfort zone in a few different ways. Partly because it's not a genre that I would ever normally pick up. And I fancy trying something a little bit different. Partly because I'd never done a read-along before. But also it turned out to be out of my comfort zone in other ways in that it actually made me feel quite uncomfortable at times. And I'll go into that a little bit in a minute. But first of all, let me tell you what I liked about the book. I really enjoyed the parts of this book that were kind of classic adventure mystery story when they had secret messages delivered to them in hieroglyphics that they had to decode, when they were fleeing from pursuers across the desert. When the pace got going, this was a really fun read that I managed to really lose myself in. And I particularly liked the last section of the book where it really kind of sped up and took on a very different tone. If you've read the book, you'll know what I mean by that. Um, I got very kind of lost in the story at that point. What I didn't like about it was partly the pace, which I felt was really, really patchy. After a very exciting prologue, there's this achingly long build-up where they prepare to go on their expedition and travel to Egypt. And at times, it seems almost like kind of Victorian drawing room drama rather than adventure story. And I found it quite hard to keep the interest up at that point. There were also a lot of points where there were long discussions of what seemed like quite serious topics. So archaeological ethics, for example, the kind of grey blurred line between looting and scientific discovery and um, there was a lot of discussion as well of the difference between Christianity and Islam because one of the characters in the book was a British army officer who had converted to Islam in order to marry an Egyptian woman and those conversations to me just seemed a little bit out of place in this kind of book they seemed like they were taking themselves a bit too seriously but not actually taking the time to discuss those topics which could have been really interesting in a different kind of novel so I wasn't very into that. The other thing that made me really quite uncomfortable was the attitudes in this book towards characters who were non-white, non-British, non-male. In a book that's set in the 1880s and is based around characters who are mired in the kind of colonial attitudes of the time, it's not really surprising that they would think that way, but I didn't feel that those views were at all interrogated or challenged. And I think that there is a way to write historical fiction which acknowledges the prejudices of its time, but also shows shows them as the absurd, wrong-headed things that they are. I suppose the problem with writing in this kind of genre is that it doesn't leave a lot of room for character development to show the reader, if not the characters in the book themselves, that those who are not at the top of that kind of patriarchal, colonial hierarchy don't actually fulfil the kind of 
casually racist and sexist assumptions that they have about them. I thought particularly that the character of Jenny could have been used to do that really well and it made me think for example of Sally Lockhart in the books by Philip Pullman and what a kind of strong and independent character she is always exceeding the expectation of all of the male characters that she comes up against in Victorian England. But I don't feel that Jenny was kind of fleshed out and succeeded in that at all, so that was pretty disappointing for me. But all in all, I was glad I read this book, I was glad I tried it, and I'd like to try more in this genre, but maybe not by this author. I'd also like to read some more books that deal with ancient Egypt. I think I read a lot as a child, and I'd kind of forgotten how interesting that culture was to me. So if you'd like to recommend any Egyptian-themed books, then go ahead in the comments below. And a really special thank you to Katie for suggesting this and for tempting me to move outside of my comfort zone and try something that I never would have picked up otherwise. I really look forward to taking part in some more read-alongs in the future. So if you took part in the hashtag Berry Read Along, let me know what you thought of it. If you've done a video, link it to me down below and I will hopefully see you again on Booktube soon. Bye!